Greetings everyone, welcome to Hearth Center. Yes, I, Lotus Knight, am back, and I am here to bring you another great Hearth Center episode. I am joined by our great crew here together once again. We have Super Chicken. Chicken, how are you? Oh, wait, you're muted. One second. My bad. Um, and you're not muted anymore. Awesome. Yeah, it's it's uh it's great. Yeah, great to have you back on the show. Excited to cover some of the championship teams. You know, it's great to be back. I like doing this show so much. And speaking of liking doing the show, we have the other host, well, one of the our three hosts who's been here this whole season doing an amazing job. Geranium Battle. Geranium, how are you tonight? Oh, now I, now I had myself muted. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm doing uh, I'm doing great. I mean, yeah, as uh, as Chicken said, we're going to be covering uh, all of the most important matches for who is winning these titles. And in fact, we've got two title wins already to talk about. And then a third one we're talking about with an interview later on in the show. So uh, this is definitely i think the the biggest show we're gonna have for the rest of the season and then we're gonna have a, a tighter focus for sure um on our bottom right corner neji welcome to the show once more you're the man of the hour with i believe it is two championships right now how are you doing i'm doing great happy to be back glad to have you back as well lotus and excited to get into the show and the interviews. Oh yeah, we're going to have some fun tonight. And last but certainly not least, he was, was taking my place in offing, amazingly must I say so, um, for the last three weeks. Um, the exceptional off who's everywhere, hero finalist, Dr. Fish. Fish, how are you tonight? I am, I'm doing well. Yeah, I, I wish I was a hero finalist this season. It's been a couple. Um, but you know, I I'm I'm happy to be here as a guest. Um I was more than happy to uh to op in your in your place. Um and we have a great show. Oh yeah. I, I made a mistake. It's semi finalist, right? Yeah, we made semis. Yeah, semis. Sorry, I got confused for a second. I was oh, all looking good. at my picture and trying to answer. What I, was I, going I, I got on. hit with the F two L. I got hit with the F two L curse. Yeah, fair. <laughs> That's fair. Uh, we have a lot to cover tonight. Um, uh, well, probably not as much as some of our other shows because we've gone crazy before. I don't even know how many times at this point. But there's still a lot of content to go over, so we are going to start with our very own player of the week now usually we don't do player of the week um at this point because well we've kind of already ended the season but we have a special one for you all tonight um and i'm going to ask geranium battle to start us off with player of the week of course as playoffs begin we tend to slow down the player of the week award however this week we are bringing a special addition to you, the only player of the week this week. One player this season has already done something no other player in THL history has accomplished. It was never even an option, and this season we had a pioneer. Robobson successfully completed all five constructed series. That is a stupid <laughs> that is a stupid amount of hearthstone. His dedication and participation in the community, uh, it is dedication and participation in the community that deserves recognition. Not only did he play in all five, but he also capped in all five. And all but one of those teams made playoffs. Oh, sorry. Bree Bobson's hard work absolutely paid off not only for himself, but the huge portion of the community he helped out by captaining. We've memed on Rebobson uh, plenty here at Player of the Week as he begged for the award, and it was a good time teasing that out. 
but he absolutely deserves to be recognized here and so we wanted to do one massive recognition for him and create a week just for him huge congratulations rebob you absolutely deserve this award and you know maybe we'll throw you another one in a few years <laughs> nice may i just say thank you for splitting that up so that the only person who writes for player of the week never had to say his name thank you <laughs> no, what are you talking about? <laughs> oh, that was on purpose. Oh, no, wait, please. Oh, my God, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I, I do write player of the yeah. week. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I knew I had to, at least one of you had to be the one who wouldn't say it. So when I was splitting it up, it's like, probably Geranium should start. <laughs> um, yeah, congratulations, Rebob. Um, this is a crazy season. Um, this is a crazy season for so many people. I don't understand what happened in THL this season. Um, but I want to give a special congratulations to Rebob. He already got Hall of Fame. We all He knows how much we all appreciate him. So just sending Rebob some love from everyone at um, Player of the Week Committee and in t from THL in general. That said, why don't we hop into our first series of the night? I'm going to change the order here, and I'm going to leave all the finals to act to later. And we're going to start with Legacy, because it is the only series that is still happening. And we're going to begin with our first match, where we had the Hot Zilfs facing F2L White. And to talk to us about this one, uh, Fish, why don't you tell us about this match? Gladly. So we have Hot Zilfs versus F2L White. Um, this match was extremely close. It came down to the four seed and five seed matches. Uh, so starting us off, Rami took a 3-1 win over uh, our player of the week, Robobson. Um, Astral Frog getting a 3-1 win over Myanodon. So it looked kind of grim for Hot Zilfs to start. Uh, but Slod taking a 3-2 win over Dome Day. And then from there, Onfall taking a very close 3-2 win over Chronic on stream, followed up by Totino's Pizza getting a 3-1 over Lefty to send F12 White to the semifinals. This one was so, so, so close. The 14-13. Neji, anything you want to add about this one? Yeah, I was looking through the matches earlier in the week, and Hot Zilfs were up, and F2L White really needed the big comeback, and they got it. I was kind of surprised to see, well, not necessarily surprised that they actually came back, but um, it was pretty impressive for them to claw their way back and win by just one point uh, to move into the semifinals. And as we can see from the bracket, um, it was... Kind of a crazy week in general, and I'm sure we'll get to some of those matches after. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this was a... Uh... Also, there was one card, only one card released this week. And it kind of made the weirdest impact on the meta. So I want to take a second before we move in, since we have a bit of time for tonight's show. What is everyone's impression of what Prince Renathal did for the meta last week? I'll ask Chicken first. Uh yeah, it I think it kind of really sped up the meta indirectly because I think at first a lot of people were like alignment druid uh was was really good into a lot of the popular decks like um especially curse warlock. I think it's kind of like almost like curse warlock's almost completely out of the the meta right now. Mm -hmm. At least from what I've been uh from what I've been seeing um and I think Rogue has actually really shot up in popularity, probably because it's it's really good into a lot of the kind of greedy anti-control decks. And it yeah. also is, is pretty good into aggro. Um, and a lot of the control decks that would counter it have been somewhat forced out of the meta, especially, I think Paladin especially has been forced out by like Alignment and Prestor Druid. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to ask Fish anything you want to add about specifically Prince Renathal. Anything 
that it has impacted for you? Oh, I think he said he had to go get some water, so oh. to come back to, to him. Geranium, anything you want to say about Prince Renathal and how much it impacted to you? Yeah, um, I, I would say Prince Renathal has uh, impacted me quite a lot. I would rank it as my least favorite card of all time, uh, just because of uh, the results it had on me. Um, Fair. I would believe that... Uh, so Prince Renathal, of course, uh, made everyone at the beginning of the week think that Druid um, was extremely powerful, uh, almost like couldn't be countered. And then um, near the middle of the week, uh, when it came time for submitting um, class lineups, uh, you'll see a lot of people submitted Druid, I think, because of that. Uh, and then near the end of the week, when people played matches, you'll see a lot of people losing with Druid. Um, and I was no different. I believe that uh, Prince Renathal, you know... Um, uh, and and uh, and maybe specifically C-Mac not bringing Druid was a uh, a big uh, thing in the in the match we haven't gotten the chance to talk about yet. Yeah, I mean we can see a similar effect in Zilf's Recept to White, where Druid was lost a lot of the matches. Um, Deji, anything you want to add about Prince Renathal last week or Prince Renathal in general? Yeah, I think it was a pretty big shakeup. I know at least for our team in Legacy, we were definitely getting smacked by some Renathal decks that we were not expecting. Um, in nearly every single game, there was a Renathal. So yeah, our plan was didn't go too well. And um, as you can see from the bracket, we did not make it through. So I was not a big fan of it. Uh, maybe as things develop and the new expansion comes out, my opinion will change, but it was such a big shakeup that I was not really down for. And I mean, also it changed the MT meta a bit too. It was just not the best timing in my opinion, but uh, it's definitely an interesting card and I'm sure um, it'll have a big impact as we move on through the next few expansions. Yeah. I'm just going to add one point to it that I think a lot of people might not notice. We had an enormous nerf like a week before Renathal, approximately. And that meta hadn't even sta stabilized yet. And then Renathal came out. So we didn't have a stable meta yet. It was starting to stabilize, but it wasn't there yet. And then they released a card that people went crazy trying. And I think that kind of made it such a chaotic meta that it in some sense felt like an early expansion meta. Like a week one or two. And I feel like that's an interesting effect. We haven't seen it to this extent in the middle of the season before. Um, whether it's desirable, I think in MT it definitely had an effect. But whether it's desirable or not remains to be seen for future Hearthstone tests. But with that said, everyone ready to move to our second match of the night? Yes. Absolutely. So, our second match of the night, we're going to talk about Fish Eternum facing Season 28 THL Legacy Series team. And I'm actually going to ask here, Geranium Battle, do you want to do the recap for this one? Why, well, of course I do. Uh, I would be honored. Because Fish Eternum uh, took the series 13-8. to eight. I believe getting um, almost the exact same number of points they got the previous week. Uh, but um, unfortunately not playing all five of the matches here. Yo Daddy taking a Game 5 win over Super Chicken. Uh, German Shep still keeping it strong with a 3-1 to one win over Zancat. Um, but earlier on in the week, Laughing Frog had swept You Kitten Me on stream. Back-to-back uh, -back wins over You Kitten Me on stream. And Jester uh, later on in the week took the Game 5 versus Gamer Dude. Um, which he complained about a bit a, uh, in private servers. Fair. <laughs> um, Chicken, I want to ask if you have anything to add about this match. Yeah, it was a bit of, I mean, obviously a pretty t tough loss for us. Um, 
I think, I mean, I think it's pretty fair to say that we were definitely the favorite going into the match. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, I, I, you'll notice that I submitted Warrior, and that is because uh, two weeks ago I submitted Warrior, and then we had a buy last week, and then I was uh, the submission day was also the last day uh, of the month, and I was trying to qualify for an MP spot, and. I rolled over my classes because I was playing ladder and forgot to Ooh. submit my classes. Um, but the warrior actually did fine. Um, it, I think it went one or no. But uh, yeah, the issue was was paladin. Um, I seem to be cursed by to to bring bad paladin decks forever and lose. Oh with no! It. Yeah, I was up. I was up two one in the series, and I only needed to get <laughs> one win with mech paladin, and then I did not. Ah. <laughs> uh, uh, so that was. That was that, unfortunately. But I mean, credit to Yo Daddy. I think he he, he played it pretty well. Um, but yeah, mm-hmm. it was just uh, unfortunately not not happening for me. Yeah. But yeah, and then that was uh, yeah. I think Kitten played first, lost his match, and then I lost. Or no, and then yeah, and then I lost my match, and then we we're basically waiting on uh gamer dudes match to see if like it was worth playing out for like uh Shep and Thalfix because they played like immediately after him. Uh I think Shep started because Gamer Dudes match had gone a little bit like past when Shep was supposed to start his match. So they they started but it actually didn't end up mattering because Gamer Dude ended up losing in uh in five games. So then yeah Thalfix did not end up playing either. Anything else people want to add about Fish Eternum facing the Season 20 Well and THL Legacy Series team? All right. So I'm going to move into our final match of the night. We have the Kachow Clowns facing four Justins, one Sustin. And Chicken, I want to ask you if you want to tell us about this one. Yeah, this is. I was the only one last week. I think that picked uh, the four Justins to win. Um, yeah, luckily, luckily for the Justins, Infinite did not have to play because who knows if we would have DQ'd or not. But <laughs> uh, the rest of the Justins were able to either pick up wins or, in Wild Rose's case, still a point, uh, which was enough to push them over the edge. I wasn't uh unfortunately I wasn't following this one too closely because I was mainly following the the uh hero team. Uh the at least I don't have chicken hero team, which uh I think we'll get to shortly, but I, I did notice that they were picking up wins skirt, uh as usual, <laughs> crushing it in the five seed. Um the rotating one seed, which has been wild rose for the past couple of weeks, uh did didn't pick up a win, but nine in the two and Pokemon in the four were able to close it out. Um, yeah, it wasn't I didn't really get too close of a look as to what actually happened in the matches themselves. Ne- Neji, do you want to go into more detail on what happened in <clears throat> yours and Wild Roses? Yeah. Um, okay, so mine and Wild Roses was an interesting match. There was one game in particular that was pretty funny where... I had a druid hand that was terrible. It was my opening hand was a spammy and the three biggest dragons in my deck, and I was playing it to Demon Hunter, so I was like, okay, it's doomed. But I do have a spammy. So things happened, and I ended up getting Anaconda, and I played it on turn six, and Wild Rose attacked into my Anaconda with his bone glaive, leaving it on two HP, and then he played Zaleg of the Abyss. And every single shot missed my Anaconda, and then I coined alignment and won the game. So definitely scammed that win. Uh, but otherwise, the games are pretty reasonable. Um, I know Based was the first one to play. I didn't even know Based was playing. I went and loaded up the website to see what classes Wild Rose has, and I saw Based had already lost, and I didn't even know that it had happened. And then I went and checked the Discord, and apparently it 
and she talked about it and I just missed it. So um, unfortunate there. Um, and then Kodamura also lost. So we had to win all three matches. I was the first one to play and I won. And then Corden was playing on stream. And unfortunately, he lost two to three. And yeah, there were a lot of Renathal decks on the other side that we were not expecting. And it definitely got the job done for them. So nice job to uh, the Justins for knocking us out, unfortunately. There's some uh, there's some pretty fun facts in this. Um, I do know that Nine Eyebrows brought 160 cards. He um, did. And then there's another fun fact that I'm not sure whether Neji or Fish wants to say it more. Uh, but I'll open the floor. Something about Neji's... Uh, Current status. Oh, oh yeah, I did get to a thousand PR, which is cool. Yeah, yeah, Neji nice. hit one thousand true PR. First THL, I, I believe he's the first ever yep. THL player to reach one thousand true PR in, in a in Legacy. And I would assume if he did it in Hero, it'd be Hero as well. Nice, yeah, Mate, that was cool. Yeah, I, I thought that was cool. I, you know, I I hadn't I hadn't been keeping super track of everything but uh you know when Ned neji messaged me he was like yo look at this i was like all right <laughs> yeah so um that is our final legacy match we're covering for the night um the blue naga call did fall to scd we're co not covering that match due to our policy of not covering matches with dqs um something we just avoid we do this the whole season but i want to ask you all one thing um which team do you all think takes legacy and you know i'm going to start here with neji neji which team takes legacy uh, I'm going to hop on Chicken's bandwagon and say Justin's or the Justin team is going to win. They were very close to winning last season, um, and I think they're going to bring it home this season. Okay, so someone's counting on them not bringing in Inzi. All right. Yes. <laughs> so true. It's <laughs> a good point. Um, all right. Um, or loss, but um, Fish, what do you think? Oh man, there's a lot. There's the teams who are left that are are pretty solid teams. Um, I think this is STD's year. I I think I think BOMD and crew is gonna is gonna take this one home. They've been they were there a couple of seasons ago, came just short, and I think they'll get there this time. All right. Um, Geranium, any call you want to give here? Okay, um, so F12 is in semis, so they're going to lose. Uh, so that's Justin's in finals, and then I think between STD and Fish Eternum, uh, there's already one match result up, and that is Vampire taking a 3-2 win over 2-fly. Uh, and I think from there, Fish Eternum is going to win that. So... I think it's Justin versus Fish Eternum in in uh, in finals, and then Fish Eternum I think is going to uh, uh, clinch it out. I really hate this saying, but um, uh, champions have great five seeds, whatever it is. All right. Now that is it for us talking about legacy. Any final legacy comments before we move on to our next series? Our next series are going to be a lot faster, and we're going to hop in straight to Hero first. Um, and one second, let me just prepare the screen. Now, to tell us about Hero, Hero had the finals between at least I don't have chicken and Awake Past Midnight. And I think from these teams, the best person to tell us what happened here actually dr fish fish tell us what happened <laughs> yeah for sure um this was a very close match it started i believe it started with skirt versus bone masher skirt skirt getting his sweep 
um, down in the four. Next up was Laughing Frog versus You Kitten Me, I believe. Yeah, so it went to um, so it went to five to four. Uh, for at least I don't have chicken. And then afterwards, um, Neji um, and Justin played next. I'm not sure the exact order, but uh, German Shep able to take a three to one win over Neji Boston. Um, and then ju- always Justin Time able to take a three to two over J Rich. And then uh, finally on stream, uh, C Mac and Geranium had an epic five game series, and C Mac came out on top. Giving at least I don't have chicken, giving nine and C Mac their fourth hero title. And um, I think Justin, it's like Justin's second or third, <laughs> and giving Neji his first PR, his first PR series championship. So, congratulations. Um, yeah, congratulations. At least I don't have chicken for winning. I want to ask Neji here anything you want to add about this one. Um, yeah, so like Fish said, it was Skirt and then Kitten, so it was basically tied up, and it just came down to a best of three, and yeah, I was the first one to play, and I lost, so we weren't feeling too great, because we needed to win the next two, and then Justin was playing, and he was down 1-2, and in a bad spot in his game, he said, and he was like, he was like checking out, he was like, oh, well, it's been a good season, in his mind at least and then he managed to claw his way back and then win game five as well so we were feeling good um and then we got to work on prepping c-mac and it worked out and he got the win in game five so very happy to win the championship very proud of the team for the way we bounced back i think we made playoffs and we were three and five um as our record and then we ended up six and five at the end after winning three playoff matches so good comeback and uh yeah anyone wants to add anything else about the hero finals we will try to get the hero team to come here next week we Mm -hmm. had eu or sorry pro players come in this week because their schedule fit better Uh, yeah um say um I will say that uh, I believe because of the MTs, um, you know, Shep was out of commission, Neji was out of commission, Justin was kind of out of commission uh, for the at least the midway through the week. Um, most, you know, when, when sort of the lineup prepping or the, the class prepping was happening. And uh, I mean, you know, I, I just want to congratulate CMAC. It was mostly me prepping versus mostly him prepping, I'm guessing. And uh and you know, I thought I outboxed him in some spots, and then uh, and, it, and it turns out that, uh, that his classes were superior. Um, so, you know, uh, being being the one who's been on this team, C Mac and Nine, um, I, I think it was really well done. Anything else to share about? Hero playoffs before we move into EU Pro. Um, I put it in chat, but I want to I want to just shout out how well Skirt turned his season turned his season around in playoffs. Like he was one and seven in the regular season, then he went three and zero oh, like in matches and went nine and two in game score. He completely swung, like the the chances for at least I don't have chicken by by, um, kind of getting back in form. So I'm very happy for for him to have done that. Mm-hmm. Now, I'll keep us moving because there's still a lot of show to yeah, go. For sure. Let's move into Pro EU. Pro EU had its finals and they were tight. Neji, what happened there? Uh, yeah, Pro EU was super close uh, at the end here. We had League of Nations versus Pertinax, a 14-13 to 13 match in the finals. I'm not sure what the order of the matches was, but we had 
Izzad take a 3-2 over Mott. We had Gaboom take a 3-1 over Revokes. Mighty took a 3-2 over Martinino. Bounty Knight 3-0 over Deads. And Dinzino a 3-2 over Den. So very, very close. You can't get much closer. I don't know who played the final match. I'd be interested to know if any of the other casters here know what the final match was. I think it might have been Mott versus Izzat. It was either that or Bounce Knight versus Deads. So. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, well, well done to League of Nations. They were super dominant at the early and mid stages of the regular season and then um, picked up a few losses towards the end, but they were still a super, super good team and they came in clutch in the playoffs and got the win. I feel opted. I believe it was uh, Mott versus that was the last match that mattered, and then I believe Bouncy Knight played after. Gotcha. Yeah, Diamond said that they already won before Deads versus Bouncy. Yeah. Okay. Um, anything anyone wants to add about Liga Nations facing Ferdinax? Congratulations. This is in order. And yeah. Yeah, congratulations to um, Pro U Winners League of Nations and congratulations to Perdinax and congratulations to all mm -hmm. first and second places so far because it's tough. THL level is so high right now. Um, if you made it far, it doesn't matter where you made, I want to congratulate everyone who put in an effort and had great results this season. There's still a lot of seasons to go, I'm sure, and next season is probably going to be harder than this one, especially in Hero, because everyone knows in Hero every season is more competitive. Yep. Um, and, yeah, I'm going to bring this to our main screen, because we don't have any more comments about the EU Finals. And in the main screen... We have our commercials. Today is probably our third to last um, commercial. And yeah, Fish, do you want to read our commercial tonight? Of course, of course. All right. Well, hey there, Twitch viewers. Have you subscribed to Team Hearth League yet? Make today the day to be a league yourself and subscribe to our channel. This subscription enables the THL team to help cover the various costs of operating our website as well as improve the quality of our memes and content to our viewers. If you have Amazon Slime slash Twitch Slime, then you can sub to the channel for free. Subscribers will get a THL emoticon as well as the lovely THL chat badge. So hit that clout button and keep the notifications bing bong to make sure you keep our team broadcast bing live. We appreciate each and every two of you. Special cope to our viewers check out THL's other social media points of interest. Uh, our website, teamhearthleague.com. Kachow us on Twitter at THL underscore HS. Join us on Discord at Team Hearth League. League. The true Hearth legend himself, Saku, continues to post all of our videos on our YouTube channel. Just search for Team Hearth League to sag everything, every Bing previously recorded. You are, of course, watching us on our Twitch channel. Team uh, twitch.tv slash team hearth league or possibly on our YouTube channel in the future. And for all of you THL Kachaudics out there, there are where are THL Kach shows every single most days of the week. You can't go bong ton bing in at any time for some banger Hearthstone related content. Canal back to the good part. Kachow. Kachow indeed. And um all right, after that commercial that I'm sure everyone got what we were talking about, um, I'm going to start the call with the pro winners. We're going to be interviewing um, the pro winners from Bing Bong Big Top. Give us one second while we move there, and um, I'm going to take this time to begin um, seeing if they're joining here, we're just missing one, I believe. But in the meanwhile, I want to congratulate everyone here 
from Bing Bong Big Top. We're just missing Kalis Luna, and Justin is joining the call soon. So we have Nails, we have Neji, and we have Ixard. Or Ix I don't know how to say it. Ixard is, is correct? Is that, yeah. Is that, yeah. Is that. Okay. Um, representing Bing Bong Big Top. Um, congratulations on winning Pro Series. Thank you. Uh, thank you, yeah. We have a lot to talk about. Um, I just want to ask you one question, and then after that, I'll give you to um, the other hosts so they can ask. Um, especially Chicken should have a lot of questions for you all from um, THL Discord. But my question was just, can you tell us how the week went for you all? Take it, Benji. All right. Um, yeah, well, going into the week, it was an interesting situation because we knew Owl's team was big on countering. Um, so we had to figure out a strategy. Our main strategy was just bring good decks that had unpolarized matchups and that were not easily targetable. Mm -hmm. uh, as you can see, like Nails, Justin, and Izzat all did that pretty much. Um, then with Kobe, we figured that No Way would bring uh, Naga Priest uh, because he had brought it the past, I think, three weeks or four weeks. Ever since it was good, he had brought it every week. So um, we stole Nice Jewish Owl's lineup from the previous week, which was the Naga <laughs> Priest target, <laughs> card for card, I'm pretty sure, and um, shipped that, and it got the job done. And then uh, myself, well, I had brought a, a control lineup nearly well i think every single week actually so i was like okay i brought control lineup every single week there's no way milo is gonna bring an aggro lineup it just doesn't make sense so i brought uh not a control lineup and i brought something that was terrible into aggro and he made the best prediction of his life and brought four aggro decks so luckily i didn't have to play my match because i was definitely gonna lose and just nails match, match was about a 50 50. Played. Yeah, it was not played. played yeah, there, there's yeah. no result in that match. There's, mm -hmm. there's nothing happened in that match. Yeah. Yeah, and then Nail's match also was not played. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, we had plans to meet up uh, IRL and uh, play, like, I mean, I think is that uh, we were, uh, and well, okay, we, we kept the plans to meet up IRL, but we didn't uh, have to play our set, and so we just uh, had lunch. Uh, um, that was a good time, but it, it would, would have been pretty sick to play uh, a pro finals like match uh, face to face. That's true. Although that would have been cool. Um, now I will open this one, or actually, um, anything else y'all want to talk about the match in particular before I open this one for everybody's questions. I mean, if Izzat and Justin want to say something about their matches, I don't know exactly the specifics, but uh, yeah, I'll open it up to them if they want to. If they even remember what happened. <laughs> it was yeah, like two I weeks ago. I bet Big Beast Hunter three times in a row that did not play a Big Beast before turn seven in any of the three games, so uh, a bit unfortunate for my opponent. It wasn't like it was... I had counter or anything. It was kind of just like decent matchups. Mm hmm. Land favored for me. And then she just like didn't draw the card. Be beast, big beast list, big beast hunter is not a very good deck. Uh, a <laughs> and you don't want to ever just be playing hunter. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah. Um, is that anything you want to share about your match? Uh, like, to be honest, I didn't remember my match because uh, I think both this match and my what? EU went to five games and both like had I had similar lineup so I'm a bit confused. But yeah, I think yeah, looking back at my tracker, it's game five. I heard you got a very good box in game five. <laughs> to be honest, I really didn't remember, but yeah, apparently I did. <laughs> Looking from uh, the Discord, it looks like it was like 
It was 1-0 for you, then 1-1, then 2-1, then 2-2, and then you won game five. So it looks like a pretty close set. Yeah, it was Mitch. Yeah, it was Mitch. Yeah, Mitch versus Priest, which is a favorite matchup. So, yeah, it all depended on the box. Okay. Yeah, I got a good box. But, yeah, it. Uh, I guess for the playoff, this was the first match that I get to play in the play- playoffs as well. <laughs> <That's funny>. True. <laughs> True, man. Did not have to play either of the other two weeks. <laughs> I thought I wouldn't have to play. I thought I wouldn't have to play any, but like I scheduled my match before nails, so mm-hmm. luckily I got to win. I guess it was the most important so one. Important you won it for us. Scheduled before Neji, because I'm sure Neji. Uh, mm, yes, this was true. This is true. <laughs> um. So, um, I'll open this for everyone. I'll start with Chicken here. Take it away. All right. Yeah, I have a few questions um, from myself and from uh, other com- PHL community members. Um, would you say that Neji has beaten the fraud allegations by winning a championship without Shep and myself? Uh, hmm. It's a good question. Good question. I think they only dragged him down, TBH. Uh, I don't know. So oh, true. I don't see how that's relevant. Like he's still a fraud, always has been. But uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the season, the season where we won, you and Chef were both six and five, like basically uh, even, if I recall correctly. No, no, no. I assure you, I finished six and three. Right place in the five yeah. seed. It was, it was crazy. Uh, true. Okay, yeah, I don't know. Shep, okay, yeah, Chef was the five seed that season, though. Oh, okay, yeah, that, that is Yeah, fun. yeah, Shep was, yeah, mm-hmm. Shep was, yeah, mm-hmm. Shep was, oh, like, Shep yeah, was in the five the forever. But who was the four seed, I wonder? Mm. Surely it wasn't me, I mean, I have to tell you. But, uh, okay, a bit of a uh, slightly more serious question now. Um, so despite having a similar, very similar roster to last season, this season went very differently, where it was kind of the opposite, where you had a very strong regular season the, the the previous season and then uh lost round one at playoffs where this season you guys kind of just snuck into playoffs and then had um a really really strong run um i don't think any of your weeks went to the fifth match actually um so it was it was some fairly dominant weeks in the playoffs what was different uh this season to last season that that made such a huge difference um, I would say, well, Nails, you go ahead. Oh, uh, the the main difference is that we uh, lost in playoffs last season, and we didn't do that this time. <laughs> yeah, it's it true. Yeah, the playoffs was like so high variance. Like on 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 another day, on another week, uh, we've lost to Brushy Tune around one, and they would be here instead yeah. of us, uh, like last season. Uh, so. Yeah, I mean, I would say at least the regular season, there was like zero prep done basically until like the last week when we needed to win. Um, We kind of were just skating by and not really paying much attention to it. And then once we got into playoffs, we're like, oh, shoot, we're four seed and we're playing against the team that hasn't lost a single match all season. So (laughs) we started prepping and luckily for us, um, it worked out that way. Yeah, then we just kept rolling along doing some prep and hopefully playing some good hearthstone along the way hearthstone has some variance in it and uh last season we didn't hit and this season we hit it's pretty True. funny as well in the quarters against our hat uh it was my individual match yeah like first time playing a decent map prep for the seed and like looking at what he could bring i was like pretty confident he was gonna bring three archetypes and then either one or two for the fourth but i had a pretty good idea uh, partly because he's our hat he likes playing the things he likes and the meta wasn't that big and i'm like okay great now with this info what can i bring to counter it and i looked through and there's just so few decks in the meta slash everything's so unpolarized and he was bringing the good decks <laughs> and ended up just bringing like nearly full mirror into him and it's like okay well done <laughs> glad yep. i did all this prep to, to... <laughs> and sure enough he brought exactly what i thought i mean perhaps that's part of the reason why he brought it that they were actually likes and it wasn't like there's was anything i could do to, to pick on them 
Uh, I think he was even slightly favored on paper because I, I didn't like Demon Hunter and want to bring it, and Demon Hunter was good. <laughs> so I just didn't bring it. <laughs> he, had to, he had three decks the same. His fourth was slightly better than mine. <laughs> but uh, the, the actual match RNG went my way. Uh, he had two Knolls, but I had two Devours, and it turns out two Devours is better than two Knolls. Uh, rest is history. All right, so here's another one. Neji and Justin now have two championships each this season as players. Who is more likely to win the third? That's a good question. I a good personally question. think that Brad is likely, but... Um, I, I mean, we can just... I'm not actually in the playing in the set, so... Yeah, I mean, Neji and I talked about a bunch. I didn't want to come back and play pro next season, but he said they'll throw in wild finals if I come back and play pro. So, uh, yeah, that, that, that definitely, that conversation. So I, I would say, <laughs> one though, right now, I, I would say bread is quite likely. Uh, uh, I'm going to refrain from commenting. Okay, uh, so I'm going to hop in with a question of my own. Uh, I know that we talked a little bit about everyone's matches, at least all the ones that got played out. Um, but I wanted to hear about Nail's surrogate match. Uh, Nail's, we heard from Dank is about his grilled cheese sandwich. How was yours? Um, so I mean, mine was uh, pretty much as good as... Uh... Dankus dads, uh, we got the same order, except I got, uh, like, we both got a buffalo chicken sandwich, um, except I got a whole sandwich, and he got a half sandwich, um, and I took uh, my half sandwich uh, back and uh, ate it uh, later that night, and so I guess I had a better order because uh, uh, I got uh, two meals for the price of, like, 1.3 meals. Um, but the uh, it, it was only a qual a quantity. The the quality was uh, uh, I assume the quantity the quality was like equal. Uh, would um, you recommend that uh, same spot? Uh, the oh the restaurant. Yeah. Oh yeah no, uh, Melt is fantastic. If you're in uh, Columbus, it's like uh, a must have. Honestly. Uh, it's like a, a a grilled cheese shop, uh, I, uh, which doesn't sound too impressive, but it's just like grilled sandwiches that have cheese on them, and then they have a pretty diverse menu. Um, and the sandwiches are all uh, like quite high quality, and yeah, it's a it's a it's a restaurant that I try to go to every time I go there, which is like it was moderately frequently pre-COVID, and it's my first time back post-COVID. Okay. Well, uh, as we heard, that was uh, not necessarily queue order diff, but definitely order diff right there. Um, I do want to also ask uh, perhaps a more serious question. Last season, I asked Neji about his catchphrases, and this is no different. Neji, when are you going to rename to Bing Bongston? Uh, that's a good point. I don't know what server it is, but my name is Neji Bongton, so maybe switch to that at some point. But no name changes in the foreseeable future, sadly. You're not uh, considering Neji Vancouver Island? It's <laughs> a good point. But where is Vancouver Island, really? Does anyone really know? No. Are Many of our Americans friends here uh, seem to think that it, that it's close to Vancouver or in Vancouver or Vancouver is on Vancouver Island, but not none of those are the case. It's a mystery. Yeah. All right. Here is another one. This one is from user Dankus Dad. This is for Neji, I believe. Uh, 
or I guess for the team, the, more the team name. But what will you do when you run out of Pixar references and clown synonyms? Had you consider, we simply will never run out of Pixar movies and clown synonyms. It'll never happen. I think he's sleeping on the ability of the clowns organization to uh, develop the meta further and uh, or progress the meta even. Um, uh, there, there's uh, there are a finite number of words in the English language, but a lot of them can be connected to uh, clowns and Pixar movies. True. So. Um, I, I don't know. We'll, it's a come up with a new name at every season angle, but uh, mm-hmm. that's all I got. Hmm. Also, is 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 that still here? I do have a question for is that. Yeah, sure. sure. Okay, uh, I had a question from Diamond asking which pro series was harder to win. Oh. That's a good one, actually. Harder to win? Uh... You, probably. Surely you, you, because you actually had to play in the U playoffs. Well, you see, you had more random playoffs, but you had more exotic games and playoffs. (laughs) True, yeah. But to be honest, I think EU was harder because because of the score at the end as well. It was fourteen thirteen, and in my game was uh smart. Uh, when we played, we were the fourth fourth match. Uh, and game five, I played really bad, but I wasn't punished for it. So it could have gone. It really could have gone the other way as well. So I thought it was, yeah. It was the score was close. Even though we won earlier, the score was close, but they could have won it also as well. Yeah. Well, you heard it here first. NA Pro is free, and EU Pro is yeah, infinitely harder. Good That's deduction true. skills. Definitely what I said. So, Definitely. I mean, it's like a free- everyone, everyone already knew that NA players are terrible. Um. Oh, yeah. Here's a, another question from from Rice Bowl. Uh, well, actually, I kind of edited it a bit to ma- make it a bit more of a content angle. But um, how long has Niji spent in the five seat across all of his pro seasons? Psh, not very long. Probably like a couple matches. You know, you know how it is. I mean, he like he's the team's captain, so he likes to throw himself in the one. So it takes a while for him to fall there, but uh, he normally mm-hmm. gets there eventually. That's a good um, point. I, I think that uh, I, I started the season in the five, and I think I lost week one. Or no, I didn't lose week one. Uh, yeah, I started the season in the five, and I think I spent less time in the five than Neji. <laughs> uh, maybe. Um, I'm interested to find out. Yeah, no, I, oh yeah, I, I definitely won week one, and I think we kind of like did not do well aside from that. Week one, this is coming back to me. Um, uh, I, I think Neji has spent a greater than 20% uh, of the time in the five seed, at least when I've been on uh, his team. Okay, I just checked. I spent seven out of the ten weeks in the five seed. Let's go. Let's go. Nice. <laughs> okay. Um, another question from Diamond. Uh, this is for Neji. Why should people play spike ball? I don't know what this question means, but I, I'm sure Neji will. <laughs> okay, there's this game that people play. I don't know if it's just here where I live, but it's very fun. You play on the beach. It's like volleyball, kind of. And I keep telling Diamond to come over here and play because he lives like a two-hour ferry right away and he hasn't come yet. So you should come and play. Everyone should come and play. I don't know what to tell you. There you go. Sounds like you know it's lost. Exactly. 
I think it was on like Shark Tank or something. So I don't think it's just here. What? What? what okay. How many people per team is it? You play two v two. Do you need jerseys to identify your teammates? <laughs> Let's say if that if you I came and visited you with two championship red likely t- 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 t-shirts to identify <laughs> ourselves as on the same team. <laughs> Would I wear it? Is a good question. I mean, I mean, you need you need a jersey. Though. It's just like very clear. <laughs> True. Okay. Um... I'm going to uh, actually jump back over to, uh, to Iza since uh, this is, I think, the first time we've had him on uh, content. Now is the best time to ask. Um, yeah, sure. We, uh, we, of course, know why Neji is named Neji Boston. Uh, we know why Always Just In Time is named Always Just In Time. We don't know why Nails is named Nails. But why, why have you chosen the specific letters um, that that looks so strange together, all to just be pronounced the same as your actual name. Yeah. When did I? It's about Joff Joff years ago, sir. Oh uh, yeah, Joff years ago, I guess. When I was uh uh finding a name for my StarCraft two account, just trying to find a new name that I can use for longer instead of some like some old names that I use. Which was not really, you know, uh, not that good, I guess. But yeah, I came up with this and stuck to it since then. Oh wait, I was muted. Sorry. I'm going to hop in here and um, move us to the final part of the show. We have a checkout question for both our hosts and for the winning team. So first, I want to congratulate one more time Bing Bong Big Top on their win over Rope and Cope and for winning Pro. Congratulations on quite the ending for this season. Um, I know not all of you are here, so I'm going to especially congratulate Kalis Luna, who couldn't make it tonight. Moving us back to the main screen, we have a checkout question of the night. And our checkout question of the night for everyone is, what do you want to see? To get the exact wording, is, tell me something you want to see out of Castle Nathria. We have a new expansion coming soon. What do you want to see from it? Um, and I'm going to start with one of the people in the team, um, in the pro team. Tell us what they want to see. Um, always just in time. Justin, tell me, what do you want to see from the new expansion? I've not been following at all. I, I don't know. Oh, you don't need uh, to. Just tell me something. Oh, I don't know. I've not been enjoying uh, a game much recently. Yeah. Decks just aren't very appealing. I think they're all kind of like play the same. So I guess just more unique mechanics would be cool. Uh, fair. No, uh, I'm not picky. That's fair. No, that's totally fair. Um, nails. Anything you want to say that you want to see from Castle Nathria? And thank you, Justin, for being here tonight. Yeah, I've got similar vibes as Justin. All the decks right now just feel super. Flat and like, oops, uh, like flat and low power level and kind of blah. And I just just want like new stuff and that's fun to play. Um, yeah. The just the game is kind of not in a great spot right now. It's, yeah. it's not like super unbalanced outside of just everything being weak. Yeah. And so like the the power plays that people make are. Or the decks maker just way better than anything else they do. Is that? I hope I said it right this time. Probably didn't. Um, anything you want to say that you're excited for the new expansion? I haven't been following that much as well about the new cuts, uh, and I'm 
I feel the same way as Justin and Nails. Like, uh, after the like the last nerf, or uh, the warrior, especially the meta got really, really, like, um, like it's balanced across the board. I guess much more balanced, but like it's less fun to play because the decks are like Nails said too flat, right? Like, yeah, it's just a bit more boring. Yeah. Yeah. And for the last player on our pro team, and thank you one more time, is at Justin and Nails for being here tonight. Neji, thank you for being here tonight. Anything you're excited from for the new expansion? Yeah, um, <clears throat> I just want new fun decks to play as well. I think, like as I was saying, the nerfs really brought down the power level. They nerfed so many cards, so many powerful cards that um, the decks are just a bit boring to play right now. Um, and if they wanted to create a balanced meta, well, I'd say they did a good job, but, um, you also want to have a fun meta and I don't think it's very fun right now. Um, so yeah, just new, exciting mechanics and personally bring me some Highlander cards. Yeah. That's all nice. I need. Yeah. You will get Reno and exactly nothing else. Be happy with it. I want a new Reno. Second Reno. No shot they bring more there are many other Reno players. the Relicopagist. Yep. Oh, okay. Reno the Relicopagist. I, I agree with that. Mm -hmm. Just wait until um, Neji makes his Reno Renathal decks. Yep. Cope and Reno Tall. That's uh, the pronunciation. Oh, okay. Um, 40 unique cards. So. I want to give a very special thanks to Geranium Battle for joining us tonight. Geranium, always great having you. My question for you is, anything you're excited about the new expansion? Uh, that was not the question you asked everyone else. Um, I will say the thing that I want to see come yes. from the new expansion. Yeah, I mean the um, one you want to see. Not the one that, yeah, yeah. from what has been... Nothing yeah. Has really. Um... As for uh, what I want to see from the new expansion, I mean, uh, the current expansion, I think um, there's sort of a general sentiment that uh, there's less skill involved in, um, in actual decision making. And I think a great way to move back to an era of Hearthstone where there was a lot of heavy decision making is to add a card called Rescrew. It's a priest one cost spell. Uh, it heals for three, and then it has uh, infinitely infuse um, uh, for one. And that is uh, add an extra random priest card to your hand when you cast this. I think this will definitely increase the fun that players have. Nice. That sounds like a really good card to print with Radiant Elemental in the format. Yeah. Cannot think of anything to generate that would happen uh, with that combination. Um, revert. Oh, go ahead. Uh, revert the nerf uh, where you can't generate the same card again and just uh, generate infinite re screws. Mm, there no. <laughs> um, Fish, I want to thank you one more time for joining us tonight. Always great having you. Tell me, what are you looking forward in Castle Nathria? Um, so first off, thank you for having me. Uh, this is always a lot of fun. Um, what I want to see, I, I think, I think again, just gonna echo the sentiments of a lot of the other players. Um, this this expansion got pretty was pretty stale at points, um, especially towards the end. I, I think the nerf, like the amount of shifts that the meta took in the play, in like. Especially, like, from my perspective as someone who was in Hero Playoffs, it was, like, we had a complete kind of meta shift in the first week. Um, and then, like, we had what happened in finals. I, and I think it was kind of interesting, but I want to see it not just turn into kind of... Um, I don't, I don't want to say, like, decisionless decks, because I think there, there's always decisions to be made. But um, just a little bit more fun. Like... I don't know, it was kind of fun when decks like Garot were there and, like, it was very skilled testing and, like, players like myself, like, had to, tr like, who, you know, aren't Justin or, or the or these pro level, these pro champions levels of play, like, had to, like, learn a fun, a fun, interesting deck that had so many decisions. 
I think that was really like what made it Hearthstone kind of fun. What makes it fun? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Chicken. Last but not least, anything you are looking forward to see from Castle Nathria? And thank you one more time for being here tonight and for being in so many shows this season. Yeah, yeah, it was a, I had a great show tonight. Great uh, season of shows. Um, I think kind of echoing what Pew said. Um, yeah, more de- decks with some more depth to them. Um, I feel like it does seem like combo decks have slowly been whittled away at in the past like few months. Um, since all the I don't know arena enjoyers have continually complained about combo decks until they've been nuked into the ground. Um, yeah, like I, I don't know. I think like Gro- Rogue is probably. Uh, the most fun deck I've played in in recent memory, and I hope I hope we can get something some more decks like that in the next expansion. Well, you heard it here first. If I can ask for one thing, and this is probably going to be a weird one, but I kind of want more randomness. I feel like there isn't enough randomness in a lot of cards right now. And just having interesting generation randomness can make the game more fun, more diverse. Like, make matches not feel the same. So, my call would be print more do, random. What we need to do is nerf potion to 5 mana. It's a nerf, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I promise not to make Turtle Mage 2.0. It's, it's a nerf, trust me. <laughs> I would never go infinite with with parrot potion. No, no. Why do you think that? <laughs> right. Um. That said, I think that is it for us tonight. I want to give a very special thanks to the winning pro team, Bing Bong Big Top. Um, congratulations one more time. Always just in time, Neji Boston. Nails and Izot, um, as well as congratulations to Kalis Luna. Couldn't be here. Um, thank you so much for joining me, Geranium Chicken and Fish as hosts, and Ch- thank you Nagi as hosts as well. Uh, we are coming back next week. Next week we're going to recap Legacy semifinals, and maybe we're going to have um, the Hero Team here. We'll see if Justin and Neji can make it happen. Um, with that said, I want to say good night for everyone, and we will see you all later. Have a good one.